I know I've said this before, but occasionally I will do a timeline on a video that I just, you know, it's a movie I hadn't seen in a while and wanted to watch. And this was one of them. I had this hankering to watch Watchers uh, and, the, and its sequel, and I had never seen the third or fourth one before. So I thought, hey, let's just do a video on it, and let's find out if the timeline makes any sense. So let's watch. Ha <laughs> ha. We start watching in 1988 with Watchers, based on the Dean Koontz book of the same name. It begins with a literal bang and an escaping dog and monster. Daryl Revok is here and he says that the creature is called the Oxcom and it and the dog are telepathically linked and the Oxy will hunt it down and kill it. Lucas is here getting it on with his girlfriend which is weird because he still looks and sounds just like he did in Lost Boys so he just seems like a little kid. The monster shows up at Tracy's farm while the dog hitches a ride with Travis, and he shows signs of having a rather extraordinary intelligence level, so he takes him on. There's a poster on his wall for U2's Joshua Tree album, which came out in 87, so we're set after that, and we learn that Oxcom stands for Outside Experimental Combat Mammal, and can I just state that I hate that they used the X in place for experimental? Like, never a fan of when you do that. Like, you're coming up with an acronym, and you're making something up. So why force it so much? There's a Field and Stream magazine here from December of 1987, but it's not holiday times, so I think we're past that, and this would be in 1988. Baby Brandon Walsh makes an appearance, and the Oxcom starts appearing around town, killing as it goes. Lem will do anything to get his weapon back, including killing the town sheriff, and the funny thing is that it sort of feels like Firestarter, except with, with a dog, and it's finally revealed that there was a third experiment, and it was Lem, and he was a genetically altered killing machine with no conscience, and kills Cliff. Travis and his mom manage to kill Lem, and then he has to fight the Oxcom, which you never really get a solid look at, but he has like a Bigfoot thing going on, and manages to shoot it dead. They then leave with the dog, and with no other clear indication, I think that that magazine puts us in 88. Two years later, a sequel arrives with Watchers 2, which gives us Project Aesop, and Cat Grant is here, working with a different dog. I mean, I mean, I'm assuming it's a different dog, it has a different tag number. And there's an Oxcom here that attacks and kills some government guys. And Calamity Jane shows up saying that they're gonna shut down the program. Dr. Steve here doesn't want the animals to get killed, so he makes arrangements for these guys to break in and rescue them. But they go down into the lower levels and set free the rage-infected monkey, or uh, I mean, the Oxcom. It starts killing and then the beast master arrives and he winds up with the smart dog. And this oxy is less furry than the other one, but Paul's stylish tidy whities and knee highs is spot on. This car has California plates and this registration sticker that's green, which was the color for 1990. So it's possibly in real time here. And this version of the oxy looks sort of like the creature from The Terror Within, another film produced by Roger Corman that came out shortly after this one. And it's uh, pretty terrible. And, and I didn't mention it in the first one, but I will here because it factors into each, but it's hilarious to watch a dog type. It, it, it just is. He dubs the creature the outsider, and a little later on, this clerk is looking at a Playboy magazine from December of 1989. And I know it's California, so it doesn't look like winter, but no one has holiday stuff up anywhere, so I think it's just a slightly older issue. And this is probably set in real time 1990, as supported by the registration sticker colors. And I love that the creature trashes the store, uh, and at one point lifts his arm up to reveal that it's just a suit, as it lifts at the seams. Paul faces off against it, leading up to a rooftop confrontation where Einstein tries to make peace with it. And to note, there's nothing in this movie to link to the first one. It, it even seems like a separate experiment. Like there's no mention of the first film at all. And possibly could just be a different continuity. But it's also fine to just be in the same one and the Aesop experiment was an offshoot of the one from part one. Four years later, in 94, Watchers 3 was released, and it begins in the same way as the first, at Project Aesop, but instead of these two quickly getting killed off, I guess they instead pick up cargo? 
It's then dropped off in South America, and it's apparently an oxcom. And of course, a dog. And, oh no, the Babadook is here. Uh, don't believe me? Listen to this. And the outsider starts killing and seems to have a completely new look, thank goodness. And then Wings freaking Hauser is here and he's in jail, but they say he's Paul Ferguson. So he's taking over the role for Mark Singer and says that he's 38 and is 16 years out of training. So he's been in military since 22 and was in Delta Force from 81 to 87. And they make a deal with him that if he goes to check out the incident in South America, he'll be set free. And he says that he's a prisoner, most likely due to being blamed for the killings in part two. And he gets set down with a crew and one's in a cowboy hat and they're bathed in red light. Hmm, headed to South America. Is one of them a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus? Paul says that he hasn't seen trees in five years. So this is five years after the last film. So it would appear to be 1995 then. And they encounter a local kid who survived the monster attack. And that dog who, without the use of a typewriter, freaking writes danger on the ground with a stick. Weirdly, the dog's code is given as AE73 and his name is also Einstein. So I suppose it's supposed to be the same dog. And after the last film, he was taken back into the Aesop project and made another test subject. Paul and Einstein are reunited and he says he thought he was dead, but then says that was six years ago and he's caught up with the Aesop project. So this is actually six years after part two. So I guess this is 1996. It attacks and starts to kill off the crew and soon only Ferguson, Einstein and the boy are left. If you guessed that their next move is to set up a bunch of traps, con congratulations, you've seen Predator. And they duke it out with the outsider, blowing it up. And they head home, although considering that the military intended to double cross him earlier, it's hard to say that he went back to the US since they obviously wouldn't have freed him, like they said. So I guess he stayed in South America. Four years later in 1998, the series drew to a close with Watchers Reborn, I guess also called Watchers 4. A voiceover tells us it's in the last parts of the 20th century, so possibly real time 98, and says that the US government has been genetically treating animals for more than a decade, possibly referencing the first movie. We see AE 73 and clips from part two again, and then part three, and then Einstein is back in a lab, so I'm not sure how he ended up captive again, but I, I guess he did. And there's a fire at the lab and he gets out. An outsider is also loose, attacking people as per usual. And oh, hey, this is the abandoned LA Zoo, where a number of great movies have been filmed, uh, like, like the last Amityville movie. And then the Buddy Doll shows up. And when I die, can, can, can my corner be Lou Rawls? Alice shows up, as does Sean's dad, and the Oxcom got his fur back, and Murphy takes in the dog, and forget typing or stick writing, now Einstein spells his name in gravy. Yes, gravy. The outsider tries to track Einstein down, and they actually humanized the big guy a bit here, since he was experimented on against his will, which is a little interesting, and then Victor Crowley pops in for a cameo. And it's revealed that Murphy's son died four years ago in a fire. Although what's weird here is that every time they talk about the experiment, they never seem to mention any past incidents and act like this is the first time Einstein has been linked to an Oxcom. So it's slightly possible that this is supposed to act as a reboot, which makes sense given the title, but also it works as a sequel, I guess. Further evidence for this being a reboot is the fact that Stephen Mock's character name is Lem Johnson, the same as Michael Ironside's from the first film. And the outsider kidnaps Grace and starts talking, and they all end up together. But Johnson ends up killing the vibe and shoots 74, but it's not dead and kills him, and an ensuing explosion destroys it. Einstein leaves with Murphy and Grace, and there's no visible date in this one, so we're just gonna go ahead with Real Time 98 based on that end of the century comment. So there you have it, four movies that really aren't linked. The second and third movies are definitely, like they are linked because they're joined by the characters of Paul and Einstein. 
Um, and Einstein is in all four, uh, and it's a different outsider in each of the four, but it's hard to tell whether or not the Einstein in parts one and four is the same as two and three. I guess theoretically it could be the same dog throughout all four movies, um, but it doesn't really have to be. Uh, again, only the second and third have any continuity with each other. All of the rest of them seem to treat themselves as their own thing. Um, if you've seen these back in the day, if you enjoy these, I want to know down in the comments. Uh, tell me if you like these and like that fine acting skills of Corey Haim. T tell me, I want to hear it. Um, please, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you're enjoying the channel so far, hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell so you get notified when new videos come out. Um, also, please check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash movietimelines. Certainly would appreciate that. Now, otherwise, you can keep on watching the videos, and I'll see you very, very shortly for another great one. Thanks a lot, guys, and bye-bye.